think people don't know me. They imagine what they think of me. And, and, and many times that's just it's this crazy, racist, mad man. Public Building Commission okay. has I shut down the site. Yeah. I don't think some people know how much I hurt sometimes, how much I cry sometimes, how lonely I feel sometimes. You'd never know it at Sunday Mass. Be ye reconciled to God. Mass at St. Sabina is spiritual, musical, and packed. Let me stand. Father Flager was first assigned to St. Sabina in 1975, a church slated to close. Six years later, he became head pastor, raised three sons here, and has seen his congregation grow from a handful of families to a full house of blacks, whites, and Hispanics. His own father, at 94 years old, still takes a front row seat. He said he's going to be a priest that was when he was six years old. In the basement right away, he put up an altar there. How he ever knew when he was that young that he's going to be a priest, that beyond me. The Flagers are die-hard Southsiders. They lived five minutes from St. Sabina, the all-American middle-class family in a neighborhood that in the 50s and 60s was all Catholic, all white. Let say freedom! Freedom! That storybook childhood was shattered in 1966 in Marquette Park. Mike Flager was just 16 when he saw a rock hit Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the neck that dropped him to his knee, and he saw lifelong neighbors he didn't recognize. This rage and this name calling and rock throwing and it's all this ugliness. And then finally I saw Dr. King. Here he was not, was the greatest witness of nonviolence because he would not respond to it. I left that day saying, either this man is crazy or this man has some kind of a power that I want to know about. He enrolled in Quigley Seminary and spent his college years immersing himself in the ways of black worship by living in a West Side church. That got him in trouble. When I got kicked out of the seminary, my parents supported me. When they met with one of the bishops, they said, you know, you could be put out of the church. My mother said to put us out. His mother died of breast cancer only weeks before he was ordained and assigned to St. Sabina. But he used his grief to improve the lives of his St. Sabina family. We're going after the dealers and the pushers. He's taken on everything from gangs and guns to tobacco and alcohol, but he's also earned a reputation as a media hound. I learned that lesson from Dick Gregory that with the media you can bring about change. Media forms and shapes way people think. In 1981, Flager decided to adopt, which almost cost him his collar, but he eventually took in three sons, all African American. I will never understand what my sons have to deal with. I've understood prejudice because I'm called names, because I've felt prejudice, I've felt hatred, and most of the time I'm the minority wherever I go, but I'll never know it as a black person. He may not believe he knows what it's like to be black, but black leaders say he's one of them. This guy dwells amongst us. I mean, he deals with, with real people. And so to his uh, critics, uh, we simply say, let his works speak for himself. This is a wonderful ministry. It's a creative ministry by a loving and prophetic pastor. Father Flager, in my judgment, is in a category almost by himself. He does an incredible, incredible and phenomenal uh, job. His home is filled with African art and an amazing collection of original writings by Booker T. Washington, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, even Gandhi. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. But his church may be his most valued treasure, Michael Flager remains true to St. Sabina, blonde hair, black soul, and all. The people here at this church know I'm for real, and they know that I love God and that I'm in love with the people here. That's all that matters.